Welcome back to our nephrology series and in this video we're going to talk about minimal change disease. This slide shows a capillary within the glomerulus which is the site in the kidney where blood gets filtered. For the blood to be filtered it has to move across this glomerular filtration barrier in order to become the filtrate. The filtrate eventually becomes urine. The glomerular filtration barrier normally prevents the passage of protein from the blood into the urine. In minimal change disease there is damage to this cell called the podocyte which forms the outer layer of the glomerular filtration barrier. Damage to this cell results in a leaky barrier that allows the passage of proteins from the blood into the urine, and that's why these patients lose massive amounts of protein into the urine, which forms the basis of nephrotic syndrome. So, minimal change disease is a podocytopathy, or a disease of the podocyte. It is the most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in children, accounting for about 90% of nephrotic cases in those under the age of 10. It is seen less commonly in adults and represents the third most common cause of nephrotic syndrome in adults after membranous nephropathy and focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. The pathophysiology of minimal change disease is not well understood, but is thought to be caused by dysregulation of lymphocytes that causes them to release a permeability factor. The identity of this permeability factor is still unknown, but it is thought to be a cytokine. This factor is capable of causing injury to the podocyte, which results in an impairment of the filtration barrier leading to albumin urea. The involvement of lymphocytes may explain the association with Hodgkin's lymphoma, uh, which is a malignancy of lymphocytes and hypersensitivity reactions in which there is an increased activation of the immune system. And it may also explain why minimal change disease is remarkably responsive to corticosteroids, because steroids inhibit lymphocytes. Examination of a renal biopsy under light microscopy reveals normal glomeruli, which is why it is called minimal change disease. Under electron microscopy, however, there is diffuse effacement of podocyte foot processes. Effacement refers to a non-specific pattern of injury of podocytes. On the left here we have the normal podocyte and you can see here albumin cannot pass through the filtration barrier because it is repelled by the negative charges on the filtration barrier. On the right we have effacement of podocyte which is this swelling and apparent fusion of podocytes. This results in a leaky barrier that allows the passage of proteins into the urine. Immunofluorescence in minimal change disease is negative meaning there are no immunoglobulins or complements. In the majority of cases, minimal change disease has no identifiable cause, in which case it is called primary or idiopathic. However, it can be secondary to drugs, and the most common drug class associated with minimal change disease is NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. It is also associated with malignancies, particularly hematological malignancies. Uh, the most important one that you need to keep in mind is Hodgkin's lymphoma. Infections are rarely associated with minimal change disease, atopy in some patients, and may sometimes follow immunization. The two commonly tested associations are the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and Hodgkin's lymphoma. So, for example, a patient who regularly uses non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and presents with edema, you have to keep in mind minimal change disease. Another scenario is a patient with nephrotic syndrome plus cervical lymphadenopathy with or without weight loss, fever, night sweats, which are called the B symptoms. And in this case, you have to think of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Minimal change disease presents with nephrotic syndrome, and we've used the pale mnemonic in our previous video to help us memorize the features of nephrotic syndrome. The P stands for proteinuria, the A stands for albumin hypoalbuminemia, the L for lipids, hyperlipidemia, and the E for edema. And edema is generally the presenting feature of nephrotic syndrome. Some patients may present with a complication such as infections or thrombotic disease. The proteinuria in minimal change disease is in the nephrotic range, which is more than 50 mg per kg a day in children or more than 3.5 grams a day in adults. And this can be measured via a 24-hour urine collection, where you ask the patient to urinate in a container 
over a 24-hour period and send it to the lab to measure proteins. Alternatively, you can perform a spot test, which is called the urine protein creatinine ratio. Um, this has the advantage of not having to wait for a 24-hour period, meaning it is a spot test. Your analysis may reveal 3 plus or 4 plus proteinuria on dipstick. And this is just a screening test while awaiting confirmation with one of the other tests, which are more quantitative. The loss of albumin in urine results in hypoalbuminemia or reduced serum albumin levels. The liver responds to the hypoalbuminemia by increasing the synthesis of lipoproteins, resulting in increased serum cholesterol levels. These patients also commonly have hypertriglyceridemia, or increased triglyceride levels, the mechanism of which is poorly understood. The edema in minimal change disease is usually abrupt in onset and severe. The patients may initially present with periorbital or leg edema, but the edema may be severe and generalized, in which case it is called anasarca. They may also have pleural effusions and ascites. The ascites may be complicated by infection, which is called peritonitis. So a patient with nephrotic syndrome with abdominal distension, pain, and tenderness may have peritonitis. These patients may also have edema of the intestinal wall leading to diarrhea. The presence of protein in urine has a detergent effect, reducing the surface tension of urine and leading to frothy urine. Serum creatinine is usually normal, but may be elevated in minority of children primarily thought to be due to intravascular volume depletion. And this is because of the reduced oncotic pressure that leads to oozing of fluid from the intravascular into the interstitial space, reducing the intravascular volume. And finally, serum complement levels are normal in minimal change disease. Other causes of generalized edema include heart failure and renal failure. Diseases that may lead to hypoalbuminemia and generalized edema include protein-losing enteropathy, quashercord disease, which is protein malnutrition. This is most commonly seen in poor countries where you'll find children who have generalized edema and protruded bellies despite them being malnourished. And finally, liver cirrhosis. Nephrotic syndrome is distinguished from the other causes of generalized edema by the presence of nephrotic range proteinuria. Minimal change disease is responsible for 90% of cases of nephrotic syndrome in those under the age of 10. It is also very responsive to steroids. Because it is so common in this age group, children who are prepubertal between 1 and 12 years of age do not require biopsy unless they have some atypical features that makes us think there might be a different diagnosis. So, the presence of hypertension, gross hematuria, or marked elevation in serum creatinine should prompt us to consider alternative diagnoses and order a renal biopsy. Similarly, these patients must have normal complement levels. A child with nephrotic syndrome who fulfills these criteria does not require biopsy for the diagnosis and is presumed to have minimal change disease and treated empirically with steroids. Failure to respond to steroids is an indication for a biopsy. Generally, most children with minimal change disease do not require a biopsy, while minimal change disease in adults can only be diagnosed with a biopsy. Presentation below one year of age, especially within the first three months of life, may be due to a congenital form of nephrotic syndrome that is similar to minimal change disease, except that it is poorly responsive to steroids. One caveat to keep in mind is the differentiation between minimal change disease and focal segmental glomerulosclerosis on renal biopsy. In both conditions, immunofluorescence is normal and electron microscopy reveals photocyte foot process effacement. The difference is on light microscopy, which reveals normal glomeruli in the case of minimal change disease and sclerosis that is both segmental and focal in the case of focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Imagine having multiple glomeruli. In focal segmental glomerulosclerosis, the sclerosis is focal, meaning it affects some, but not all, glomeruli. It is also segmental, meaning the affected glomerulus is only partially affected. Therefore, it is called segmental.
Since the sclerosing lesions are focal, they may be missed through sampling error on kidney biopsy. So you may sample only the normal glomeruli, and in this case, you'll have normal glomeruli on light microscopy with effacement on electron microscopy, and this will lead to mislabeling this case as minimal change disease. And that's why a significant portion of patients with steroid-resistant minimal change disease have focal segmental glomerulosclerosis on repeat biopsy. Such patients probably had focal segmental glomerulosclerosis from the start, with the correct diagnosis being missed through sampling error during the initial biopsy. Treatment of minimal change disease includes specific therapy and general measures. Specific therapy is with oral steroids, such as prednisone, with over 90% of children responding to steroids. Remission of the proteinuria in children generally occurs within 4-8 to eight weeks of treatment, but in adults the response is slower, requiring longer steroid courses. After remission, treatment should be continued for several weeks and then tapered slowly. A significant number of patients experience relapses and require repeated corticosteroid courses. Those who are frequent relapsers, steroid-dependent patients, and steroid-resistant patients require treatment with a second-line immunosuppressive drug, such as cyclophosphamide. The supportive measures are discussed in our previous video on nephrotic syndrome. The prognosis of minimal change disease is generally excellent, although most patients experience relapses. The relapses eventually cease, and many children eventually outgrow their disease before adulthood. Minimal change disease typically does not progress to end-stage kidney disease. Patients with steroid resistance or progressive decline in renal function may actually have focal segmental glomerulosclerosis on repeat biopsy. We'll dedicate the last couple of slides to some common tips and tricks in solving cases regarding glomerulopathies. Nephrotic syndrome is sometimes associated with cancer. Malignancies of the blood such as Hodgkin's lymphoma, are more commonly associated with minimal change disease, while solid malignancies, such as lung cancer, are more commonly associated with membranous nephropathy. And now we'll talk about the relationship between diseases of the glomeruli and the upper respiratory tract. You have to know this slide by heart, as it will help you solve a lot of cases on exams. The first scenario is when a patient develops nephrotic syndrome after an upper respiratory tract infection, especially in a child. In this case, think minimal change disease. The other scenarios are about nephritic syndrome. The first one is when a patient develops nephritic syndrome weeks following an upper respiratory tract infection, and here the most likely diagnosis is post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Nephritic syndrome that develops days following an upper respiratory tract infection in this case, think IgA nephropathy. It is synpharyngitic, which means the pharyngitis is closely related to the nephritic syndrome, especially if the case mentions recurrent gross hematuria following an upper respiratory tract infection. Nephritic syndrome with chronic upper respiratory disease, such as chronic sinusitis, epistaxis, saddle nose deformity, and or lung disease, for example, hemoptysis, lung cavities on x-ray, uh, think granulomatosis with polyangiitis, previously known as Wagner's granulomatosis.